A Song of Ice and Fire is known for its complex characters, each with their own motives and desires. However, most characters tend to be relatively transparent in their ambitions, be it power, glory, or vengeance. Peter Baelish, however, is without a doubt one of the most intriguing and puzzling characters in A Song of Ice and Fire, his ultimate objective remaining a mystery. According to Peter, chaos is a ladder to be climbed. And over the course of A Song of Ice and Fire, he certainly has created quite the ladder for himself. With great cunning, he has consecutively orchestrated the murder of John Arryn, created deadly animosity between the houses Lannister and Stark, fatally betrayed Ned Stark, betrayed Catelyn Stark, the woman he loved, murdered Lysa Arryn, the woman he pretended to love, collaborated in the poisoning of King Joffrey Baratheon, and framing of Tyrion Lannister, and ultimately instigated the War of the Five Kings. So how did Peter achieve all this, without a single bannerman or reputable title to his name? How did he manage to manipulate and destroy a number of his social superiors? A lot of it has to do with Peter's lowly beginnings. In contrast to his noble landed peers, Peter Baelish was born to a poor house of little influence and insignificant holdings in the form of a few rocky acres on the smallest of the fingers. It was only through his father's friendship with Lord Hospitelli, formed during their service in the War of the Nine Penny Kings, that he came to be fostered at River Run and acquainted with Lord Tully's children, Catelyn, Lysa, and Edmure. It was at River Run that Peter caught the eye of Lysa Tully, but Peter only ever loved Lysa's unobtainable and much more beautiful sister, Catelyn, going so far as to challenge Catelyn's betrothed, Brandon Stark, to a duel for her hand. The duel did not go so well for Peter. Brandon won the duel by a large margin and left Peter quite the memorable scar. Much to Lysa's pleasure, however, Peter didn't mind having her as his rebound girl, and soon after Catelyn's very public rejection, he managed to get Lysa pregnant. Stay classy, Peter, stay classy. Lysa's happiness was short-lived, however, because on the account of Peter's low birth, Lysa was forced to abort the baby by her father, and Peter himself was sent away from River Run. And it was arguably these early formative experiences that lead Peter to instigate the series of events which occur in A Song of Ice and Fire. Peter quickly learned that because of his lowly circumstances, he would never obtain what he desired most, and what his peers seemed to have by birth, status, power, wealth, and most importantly, the woman he loved. Instead, Peter understood that he would have to earn the very attributes that were denied him at birth, and that he would have to resort to much more astute means than birthright and physical force to obtain them. As it turns out, it was Peter's intelligence, political astuteness, subtlety, and carefully bought connections at court that gained him the very things he desired most. Firstly, Peter maintained a relationship with Lysa, even after her marriage to Lord John Aaron of the Ville. It was Lysa's unfailing love, bordering on obsession for Peter, and high connections at court that allowed him to manipulate and use her for his own ulterior motives. For instance, on Peter's behalf, Lysa convinced her husband John Aaron to give Peter control of customs at Gulltown, the main city of the Vale, where he quickly distinguished himself from other collectors by increasing incomes tenfold. This led to his being named Master of Coin, as well as being granted a place on the small council in King's Landing under King Robert Baratheon. Peter then cunningly used his influence at court to form allies and contacts, including the city watch, appointing men loyal to him in various positions at court. He also purchased numerous brothels, using them to obtain intelligence on political rivals. Eventually, his vast spy network was surpassed only by that of Lord Varys, the Master of Whispers. And it is with these various resources, his wealth, contacts, and position at court, and Lysa Arryn as a trusted accomplice, that he plants the seeds of hatred between the Starks and the Lannisters. Firstly, he orders Lysa Arryn to poison her husband John Arryn, the Hand of the King, warning her that John Arryn is planning to send Robin Arryn to be postured by the Lannisters. Lysa, fiercely overprotective of her son, he's the only one she's got, and being madly in love with Peter, and also slightly mad in the literal sense, does his bidding. Once widowed, Lysa leaves King's Landing in the dead of the night with her son Robin and presides as Lady of the Vale in the Eyrie, patiently and conveniently remaining unmarried for Peter. Peter then requests that Lysa write to Catelyn at Winterfell to confide in her that she believes that John Arryn did not die of a fever, but was actually murdered by the Lannisters. This caused Ned Stark to fear that the Lannisters were planning to overthrow the throne, and thus fearing for Robert's life, he decides to accept his position as Hand of the King. By causing Ned to accept the position of Hand of the King, Peter successfully sows the seeds of tension and animosity between the Starks and the Lannisters. On one hand, Cersei fears that Ned Stark is accepting the position to undermine her family, as the position would have otherwise gone to Jamie Lannister, and on the other hand, the Starks fear that the Lannisters are attempting to take the throne. 
Further chaos ensues at Winterfell when Bran fails to die from his fall. Catelyn, suspecting the Lannisters, decides to act quickly and heads to King's Landing to warn her husband of the extent of the Lannisters' treachery and ultimately make her case before the king. Peter is made aware of Catelyn's arrival immediately and summons her to speak with him, and when she shows him the dagger used by the assassin, he lies and tells her it used to belong to him before he lost it in a wager with Tyrion Lannister. Apparently, Peter bet Tyrion and Jaime Lannister would unhorse Loras Tyrell during the jousting. Tyrion, according to Peter, bet against Jaime Lannister and won. In truth, Peter lost the dagger to King Robert, and it is speculated that it was in fact Joffrey desperate to impress his father who sent the assassin, as he overheard King Robert saying that it would be much more merciful to let Bran die than live as a cripple. And yet, it is this very lie that leads an enraged Catelyn Stark to take Tyrion Lannister prisoner, causing Jaime Lannister to attack Ned Stark, and compelling Tywin Lannister to go to war against the Starks. However, Peter's machinations do not stop there. As Catelyn takes Tyrion prisoner back at King's Landing, Peter continues to lull Ned Stark into a false sense of trust by offering to help him investigate Jon Arryn's death and eventually confirming Ned's suspicions regarding Cersei Lannister and the illegitimacy of her children. He fools Ned into believing that for the love that he bears his wife, Catelyn Stark, he is willing to help him uncover the deceit of the Lannisters and bring them to justice, only to betray him when the moment is most opportune. When Ned finally decides to move against Queen Cersei, Peter bribes the city watch to kill Ned's men and back the queen instead, leading to Ned's arrest and eventual execution. But why does Peter do all this? What is he trying to achieve? All of Peter's actions thus far, the murder of John Arryn, the execution of Ned Stark, and the framing of Tyrion Lannister, are all carefully orchestrated moves to create animosity and conflict between the Lannisters and the Starks. And it is this very conflict which ultimately instigates the War of the Five Kings. But how does Peter himself benefit from this? As we established before, Peter views chaos as a ladder. And so with subtle mastery, he orchestrates the ultimate chaos, the War of the Five Kings, and while many of his social superiors fail to make the climb from this chaos, Peter manages to come out on top. He begins his climb by negotiating with House Tyrell to join forces with the Lannisters against Stannis Baratheon, and is successful in forging a Lannister-Tyrell alliance through the engagement of King Joffrey and Lady Marjorie Tyrell, leading to the defeat of Stannis at the Battle of Blackwater Bay, in the aftermath of which he is rewarded the title of Lord Paramount of the Trident and the Lordship of Harrenhal, ultimately giving him control over the Riverlands. With his new status as a High Lord, Peter is now deemed suitable to marry Lysa Arryn, and on behalf of Tywin Lannister is requested to go to the Eyrie to marry Lysa and secure the support of the Vale. But unbeknownst to Tywin Lannister, Peter does not leave King's Landing immediately. Instead, he maintains contact with Sansa via Sir Jantos the Red and waits patiently for the royal wedding of King Joffrey and Lady Marjorie Tyrell to take place. It is at the royal wedding that a series of events unfold. Sir Jantos the Red asks Sansa to wear a splendid hair of glittering amethyst. A troop of dwarves perform a satire of the War of the Five Kings, and King Joffrey Baratheon is fatally poisoned. And in the chaos that ensues, Peter whisks away Sansa to the security of the Vale. It is later implied that Peter conspired with Lady Olenna to orchestrate Joffrey's death, arguably confirming her own concerns about Joffrey's psychotic tendencies and leading them to form a plan to poison Joffrey using the strangler planted in the hairnet Sansa is asked to wear to the wedding. Peter likely agreed to poison Joffrey so that in the ensuing chaos he would be able to whisk Sansa away but also to ensure she would be freshly widowed. Because you see, before Peter had foiled the Tyrell plot to marry Sansa to Willis Tyrell and thus causing Tywin Lannister to hastily marry Sansa to Tyrion, Peter had requested to marry Sansa himself, but on account of his low birth, he was refused. And this is where the troop of performing dwarves come into play. We later learn that Peter arranged this entertainment himself, using the dwarves to create tension between Tyrion and Joffrey and leading Tyrion to be framed for Joffrey's murder, which then leads to a highly likely chance of Sansa being widowed. And although things don't exactly go to plan for Peter, Tyrion doesn't die and instead manages to escape with the help of Peter's BFF, he still manages to whisk Sansa away without implicating himself at all. Once at the Eyrie, Peter finally introduces Sansa to her aunt Lysa Arryn and her cousin Robin. However, at his insistence, she remains disguised as Peter's niece Elaine Stone to the lords and ladies of the Vale, to prevent the Lannisters from finding out about her whereabouts. Peter soon marries Lysa, and what happens next is a bit of a pickle, but once again, it all works out in Peter's favor. Peter, being the creepy pedo that he is, can't help himself when it comes to Sansa and ends up kissing her. Lysa catches him and, being the crazy bitch that she is, tries to push Sansa out the moon door. 
Luckily, Peter saves Sansa in the nick of time, only to push Lysa herself out the door. Peter then declares himself Lord Protector of the Vale and Robin Aaron as his ward, and then leaves the Eyrie with Sansa and Robin to parade Sansa around the Vale as his bastard daughter Elaine Stone, and to train Robin for his duties as Lord of the Vale. But eventually he confides in Sansa, revealing his plans for her marriage to the house of Aaron Eyre after Robert, Harold Harding, and an eventual plan to reveal her true identity and to reclaim Winterfell in her name. Peter believes that John Aaron's bannerman will never support him or frail Robin Aaron, and so he plots to have Harold Harding, Robin Aaron's heir, to become Lord of the Vale. Sir Harold Harding, often called Harry the Heir and the Young Falcon, is a gallant, handsome squire and a ward of Lady Anya Wainwood, and therefore the heir presumptive of Robin Aaron. Should the sickly Lord Robert die without an heir, Harold would become a member of the House Aaron and Lord of the Eyrie and Defender of the Vale. So it would be unsurprising and highly coincidental if frail, sickly little Robin were to have an accident on his tour of the Vale. So let's recap. At the beginning of A Song of Ice and Fire, Peter Baelish was a powerful and wealthy court official with a seat on the small council and a few rocky acres to his name. As a dance with the dragons comes to a close, he has managed to accrue the titles Lord Paramount of the Trident, Lord of Harrenhal, Lord Protector of the Vale, and potentially Lord of Winterfell, leading him to hold power over the Riverlands, the Vale, and potentially the vast north. But is this truly what Peter is planning? He has no point of view chapters, so we can never be too sure, and as we know, he enjoys keeping others confused, always keeping his true intentions hidden. And the plans he has revealed to Sansa contradict his very nature. His kindness, generosity, and openness towards her is very uncharacteristic of him. True, he may have come to love her, but he also loved her mother once, and he ended up betraying her to her death. Either way, from what we know of Peter so far, we know that he desires status, power, and love all things that were denied him at birth and throughout his life leading up to this point. However, in terms of status and power, having Sansa married off to the heir and heir wouldn't necessarily gain him any more status, considering that Winterfell and the Vale would firstly be claimed by Harold and Sansa, and then eventually by their own children. In fairness, he may be influential for a while, but considering Peter has accumulated a number of enemies, it is only a matter of time before someone reveals to Sansa the extent of Peter's treachery and turns her against him. In truth, Peter's confidence in Sansa's compliance might be the death of him. For instance, he seems to forget that he very publicly betrayed Sansa's father, Ned Stark, to his death. Sansa will most likely learn of this in the future. If, however, Sansa continues to behave as an airhead, Peter still remains unaware of Robb Stark's will, in which Sansa is not even mentioned and Jon Snow is legitimized and named heir to Winterfell, not to mention that Bran is still alive and Rickon is already being retrieved by Davos Seaworth on the behalf of the Northern Lords from the island of Skagos. And, in regards to his Lannister-bestowed titles and lands, it is unlikely that he will be able to retain his lordship of Harrenhal and power over the Riverlands for much longer either, considering that he plans to reveal Sansa's true identity. The Lannisters will most likely not be appreciative of the fact that Peter smuggled their most valuable hostage, and more importantly, it would implicate him to be in cahoots with Sansa and possibly even Tyrion, leaving his title to be most likely rescinded. And without a single bannerman to his name, it is unlikely he would be able to defend or reclaim his title and lands. Peter's desire for love would also remain unfulfilled, considering that Sansa, being the living, breathing embodiment of Catelyn Stark, the woman he loved, would be married to Harold Harding. And speaking of Harry the heir, Peter's whole plot depends on Sansa marrying Harold, which requires her to be widowed, which will only happen once Tyrion dies, which towards the end of Dance of the Dragons, he still hasn't. So, considering that Peter's proposed plan has many loose ends, it's unlikely to be his true plan after all, but instead a mere guise to placate Sansa. It could be agreed, however, that Peter wants control over the majority of Westeros. The north through Winterfell, the east through the Vale, and the Riverlands through Harrenhal. But to what end? What does he want ultimately? Is his ultimate goal to sit on the Iron Throne? Or is it to be the power behind the Iron Throne? So that's about all I can think of when it comes to Peter Baelish for now, but I will definitely update this video when The Winds of Winter is released and we hopefully learn more of Peter's motives. But until then, if you guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe, and if you have any requests for Game of Thrones related videos, let me know in the comments below and I will try my best. Thanks for watching.